wanted to emphasize that these will give a rough idea and every candidate has to work on their own uh, uh, weak areas to get maximum out of it from tomorrow. And also as surgeons, uh, daily we will see a lot of surprises intraoperatively and postoperatively. Exam also, please keep in mind, lot of surprises will be there either in the case or in the post case session. So uh, this is the rough skeleton uh, wherein examiners will be expected to uh, tell you in the same lines like a definition, indication or indications, pre-operative preparation, consent, special consent apart from regular informed consent, type of anesthesia, position and all these things. Uh, but as a candidate, what we'll, uh, what you try to do is you try to start from definition and you'll try to go to complications so that your job will be done. But uh, as an examiner, examiner try, uh, tries to uh, see your concept whether they are complete or not by asking questions and in between with uh, diverting with various uh, interruptions. But that is to test your uh, knowledge. Basically what examiners expect you, he say they, they wanted to assess your knowledge completely and at the same time most importantly they will see how safe you are in your approach. This is most important. And also uh, in, with the in between questions and interruptions they will see how your overall balance and level headedness which is very most important than having a knowledge. And also uh, when uh, case is uh, operative surgery is asked in the morning session post uh, after case presentation please try to apply all your knowledge to that particular case or scenario always. This is very important. Don't tell uh, regarding general uh, operative surgery but fit into the it should be molded towards your case that is very vital there where you can get maximum marks and also that is very much useful in our clinical practice also. So uh, when it comes to uh, uh, anyway definition or procedure you will go through an indication suppose in morning case session if the case is asked right hemicolectomy for a cancer then examiner expects you to tell in terms of cancer surgery usually candidate most of the times I have seen they tell removal of terminal ileum and right colon and middle of the transverse colon that is not correct for a cancer surgery you have to tell in terms of pedicles you have to tell I will remove uh, if it is a right sided lesion I will remove the ileocolic artery ileocolic pedicle right colic and also right branch of middle colic along with that whatever associated power this answer examiner expects you this is the difference between knowledge and application suppose if the same case same case is a cox or ileocecal cox or a Crohn's disease which is proven on a pre-operative biopsy and the patient is having ileocecal obstruction. Then there is no need to tell in terms of pedicles. Then you can simply tell I will do a limited uh, resection of the ileocecal area. So and also pre-operative preparation. Suppose if in the morning case scenario pre-operative preparation always don't jump and tell the incision and all these things. Patient preparation is most important. We, you are doing daily in, the, uh, in your ward. But please apply that. You will do all nutritional assessment, cardiac assessment, risk assessment and all these things. And also apart from regular and high risk consent, please don't forget the special consent wherever applicable because even you are removing an organ, suppose you are doing an orchidectomy or a mastectomy or you, do, you are doing an ileostomy, it's not, uh, you may uh, think that you have told the patient but it is your responsibility that the patient should understand your language, what you are meaning, otherwise show some other patient who is having stroma, like that. that th these are all things are important, so if you tell in the same way, practical way, the exam is not a different thing. And also types of anesthesia, you should know briefly because most of you are having postings of 15 days in anesthesia, so you know what is epidural, what is high epidural, uh, spinal, local and all these things, but at the same time, examiner wants to assess you basic things like how do you prepare a gyloken adrenaline mixer how much uh, dil uh, dilution you do and depending on the patient how many ml you give all these things you please calculate and prepare in advance and that will be helpful not only for exam and also practice point of view and also position as some uh, sir is telling a lot of uh, this but uh, position and all these things are very important. These are standard things. Please just spend two minutes on that and you will be, you will never forget in your lifetime. What is that 15 to 30 degrees head low and reverse is 15 to 30 degrees head up and all these things. And also uh, know the names of all 7, 8 Trendlenbergs. Suppose if you comes to Cockers, again same thing. Cockers incision in the neck, Cockers right subcostal incision and uh, also the Cockers manure 
So if you like, do like this kind of a memory pegging, it is not only useful in exam, you can tell when examiner asks just like that, you will not be penalized if you don't tell, but if you tell, you will have the satisfaction of answering the question and apart from that, this will uh, have a lot of impact on future, uh, th that, that the kind of uh, knowing about the great surgeons will inspire you to do something and also the incision, when you are telling incision, just don't tell skin and you also try to tell quickly the muscle, what, whatever layers of time is there and go accordingly and also steps of the procedure. When you are explaining steps of procedure, it is important, or suppose examiner may ask you, you are doing a uh, uh, emergency splenectomy, what are your steps? You are doing an elective splenectomy, this is a common scenario. Steps are different from emergency and elective. In emergency splenectomy, you will try to mobilize the spleen laterally and bring it into the abdomen and put three to four clamps without injuring the tail of pancreas and stomach. Whereas in elective splenectomy, the important step is you will first ligate the splenic artery and then short gastric vessels and then you go to the tail of pancreas and then you remove the linear renal ligament and all. These are the simple things we will be doing in our daily practice. but. In exam point of view, we don't prepare for that. So, uh, in you, between you friends, final year exam going students, sit together and discuss this kind of exam scenarios and discuss with teachers. And these things not only helpful in the exam, but also in the patient care. And when it comes to the complications, this is the most important thing. When complications are asked, you please try to tell intraoperative complications, immediate postoperative or late postoperative complications. This, this is very important and also you tell how they, you manage and at a postgraduate level it is important when you on table you are, you are telling an important complication then you uh, you never tell that you are not only you it is your duty to tell the how how you manage and also one more c is there that c you should not forget that is call for help that is very important that that indicates the safety of you as a surgeon even though you are capable of uh, managing that complication you should tell, I will call for help and meanwhile I will manage. These simple things will go in a long way. These are not, these look, things look simple. But there you can uh, gain more marks. Examiner will always want to assess your safety as a surgeon. And uh, so what surgery they will ask? Every surgery is important. So in terms of acquiring knowledge and in terms of patient care, there is no minor or major surgery. The magnitude of surgery may be small or large, the procedure may be simple or complex. But every surgery, whether it is a minor or major, it is very important for you and for your patient. And in terms of assessment of knowledge in examination, there is no minor or major surgery for examiner. So examiner may assess you with a simple incision and drainage and will give you more marks if you tell it correctly. And even if you, even if you ask a major uh, surgery, even if you feel that you have tell, told nicely answer, but you may not get the major marks. So, so please uh, don't think about the magnitude of surgery, you will get more marks. You may get more marks by giving a good answer for a simple incision and drainage. So, uh, surgeries may vary from a simple incision and drainage, brachiostomy, uh, emergency procedures like uh, uh, Appendic appendicular surgeries, perforations and all these things, obstructions, any, any surgery they can ask. So it is very difficult to tell uh, the uh, types of surgeries they may ask. This is only a broad overview. So prepare for all the surgeries but while you are preparing, please try to start with simple surgeries first and then go for the complex surgeries. And uh, I wish you all the best and thank you very much for your patient hearing. Thank you so much. I think I, uh, it was very nice, very comprehensive. One addition to, you said complications. Uh, you also said intraoperative, postoperative, early late. But uh, that's a good point. But one thing is, you tell common complication first. Whenever you say complication or any operation, whether it matter, including circumcision or thyroidectomy or mastectomy, hemicorectomy, gastrectomy, you name it. But tell the common things first. If you say the rare things first, you will not appreciate it. Then, if at all, yes, if you have terrible subject, you can go to the rare and rare one by one. But please always tell the common complication, always first. That's the most important thing. I don't want you to be over smart and 
uh, the examiner. The examiner doesn't want you to be smart. So please don't remember that. Corroborative only, they can deny it. General competition, don't forget this.